the path to lasting happiness. All right, so the first thing that we need to know is that everything we're doing is something that we're doing in order to be happy. Once we have that in mind, we can use it as our North Star, like, okay, my main goal in life is to be happy. And that's why I bought this car, because I thought it would make me happy. And that's why I married this person and bought this house. So a quote by Carol Howell, everyone is doing whatever they're doing because their end goal is to be happy. So that's what I call the white belt. That's, that's the beginning of this uh, course and journey. Moving on to the yellow belt. Okay, this is just a draft. So it's practice makes perfect. No such thing as perfect. Uh, to be happy, we need to identify and eliminate the causes of unhappiness. Obvious. We're already trying to do that, so why doesn't it work for long? Do you actually know what causes you unhappiness? Rupert Spear says, when you can no longer find any unhappiness, it's called happiness. So the goal is to, it's going to take a while. This is not something that is just a light switch type of thing, right? You're going to start seeing things with this. You're going to start seeing why you're unhappy. And when those things happen, when these new events happen, when you get in new situations, your old programming, your old conditioning is going to show up and you're going to have, uh, sadness you're gonna have unhappiness so that's what I call touching the hot stove I am jumping so far ahead <laughs> uh, that's what I call touching the hot stove right what do you learn by touching the hot stove one it sucks right I'm unhappy I'm in pain I'm learning not to touch the hot stove so when you get in a situation where you are unhappy and you take a look at what is causing this unhappiness that investigation allows you to break down the cause and see like, what am I believing here that's causing this unhappiness? So we all know it's the jerk at work, that rude person online, or someone who scratched my car, right? Let's imagine you just noticed your brand new car has a big scratch and now you're angry. What's the cause of your unhappiness? So for many of us, duh, my car is scratched, that's why I'm unhappy. We never associate the real reason we're unhappy. It appears that a scratch caused my anger, but correlation does not imply causation, dork. Let's take a look at a few scenarios to illustrate this point. It happened yesterday, but you saw it today. So if it really was the scratch that caused your unhappiness, why weren't you unhappy yesterday? Did it bother you before you knew about it? Did it bother you later when you weren't thinking about it? You were distracted, you were watching a movie with your family, you guys were laughing, playing a game. Were you unhappy then about it? No. I mean, it still probably affected your mood to some degree and kind of brought that level down. Were you still upset after you went outside to take a closer look only to realize it was just a reflection? That's an important one because yes, it's our perception that creates our reality. So this whole time I'm thinking it's a scratch, I'm upset, I'm unhappy. And later I realize it's just a reflection. What we don't notice at that point is, oh crap, that was all in my head. So can you see the cause of your unhappiness? Yep, it's thought, it's all thought. The only cause of unhappiness is thought. Could we be unhappy without it? If you didn't think, if you didn't believe what you're believing about this situation, could you be unhappy? Let's say somebody uh, steals my garbage can lid. Like, what the hell? Now I gotta go get another can. Yeah, I'm all unhappy. Let's say they stole my garbage can lid and I'm trying to get rid of this garbage can anyway. It needs to be replaced. Now I can finally go, okay. Now I go to the store, finally replace the can that I've been meaning to do. I'm not unhappy about it, right? The difference in those two situations is thought, and that's it. Turn my heater back on. Shakespeare, you probably know this quote, there's nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. So it's our interpretation that 
make something good or bad. It's interesting how we can be upset with someone after a dream, even though it was just an imagined experience. How does knowing this help? Well, you can't just learn it in the same way that you learned a grammar rule. It's similar to how you either get a joke or you don't. You actually have to see that you're never experiencing the outside world. You're experiencing your thoughts about that world. And that's the critical first step. Until we realize this, everyone and everything is the cause of our unhappiness and it's time to fight. So if you think, if you think that your unhappiness comes from out there, the jerk at work, right? Your main goal is to be happy and this person is causing you to be unhappy. So you have to rectify that situation, whether that's trying to get that person fired, just being rude to that person so they'll quit, uh, being violent. You're trying to get back to that happy place. Your master is whoever controls the thing that you want. So you want to be happy and you think this person is not allowing you to be happy? That's your master. Imagine being able to escape that prison. I feel it's best for you to stop here now. You may be tempted to continue, but there's a good chance this may be all you need. Go back to your life with what you've learned and come back, come back for your next belt. This is the yellow belt after a few months if you're still struggling. So this could be the one thing like, holy crap, once you can see that all of your feelings come from the way that events are being perceived, that might be all you need. And for a lot of people, it is. So congratulations, you just got your yellow belt. For those who do want to move on, we're going to move on to green belt. But like I said, I recommend that you just sit with this for a while. So the green belt explores why we have these unhappy thoughts. So try this fun little game. Sit for one minute without thinking a single thought. That shouldn't be too tough, right? Just decide not to think anything and see if you can do it. I mean, even sit here and do it for 10 seconds. I just had a thought about sitting here too long on the video. Okay, so the mind thinks involuntarily, just like the heart beats involuntarily. You're not, you don't need to think about making your heart beat. And the thoughts are just going to flow. That's said by Emily Fitcher. Fletcher. We're human, so we're going to have thoughts. We actually have thousands of thoughts per day. It can't be turned off, and there's no unsubscribe. The experience I'm having is based on whatever thoughts appear. So your significant other is like, hey, what happened? You said you were going to run the dishwasher before bed, and you didn't do it. Right? It's like... Now I'm defensive. Why are you criticizing me? Like, oh, I'm a jerk now because I didn't run it? No. That thought never even occurred to you. Maybe it did. Who knows what you were thinking? But let's say the thought never even occurred to you. How can you run the dishwasher if the thought never even appeared in your mind? And that's the importance of setting reminders and having a, an outside system to take care of all that for you. Actions come from seemingly random thoughts based on what we learned. So thoughts seem to show up randomly, but that's only because we don't know all the variables, including the biological reasons. So when you're trying not to think for one minute and the thought about swimming occurs to you, that seems like a random thought. But every train of thought begins with a random thought. You know, I'm just sitting here working and I think like, oh man, I'm supposed to go to uh, the store and pick up some groceries for dinner tonight. That just occurred to me. And then we also have the biological influence. So for example, this is a quote, eating salt triggers the release of dopamine. It's a chemical messenger that controls your, your brain's pleasure center. Once your brain gets that first reward hit, it starts craving more. So you remember that uh, commercial that says, bet you can't eat just one? You eat just one and you, you start craving it. So I didn't remember to send the report. I feel so stupid for not realizing. Why did I forget to empty the dishwasher? 
the thought never occurred. What if you could see your perspective for what it actually is? Beliefs. It just looks true, so we don't question it. Your perspective or point of view is a particular attitude toward or way of regarding something. It's made up of opinions and beliefs gained from experiences. It's affected by mood and influences perception. So if I see that rock over there and I'm like, oh my God, look at that little turtle, so cute. It's a turtle, right? What are you, an idiot? That's a rock. Like, no, it's not a rock, it's a turtle. I can clearly see from here. What are you telling me I'm blind? What, you don't trust what I say? We get into all these things, but it's just, I'm seeing it one way, they're seeing it another way. And that's, that's based on our experiences and from the things that we've learned. And Epictetus tells us it's impossible to learn that which we think we already know. So if I know that that's a turtle, Somebody telling me it's a rock, I mean, this is just an idiot, right? And now currently, 2021, 2022, 2020, uh, we're dealing with the pandemic. And what's the main subject? Seems to be a lot of times that people are fighting over whether you're an idiot because you didn't get the vaccine, whether you're an idiot because you're a sheeple and you got the vaccine, right? This person says no to the vaccine. This person says yes. And it's each based on what we've learned, the, the things that we've been exposed to, right? Maybe the news articles, the research, what is our career? What does our family think about it? What is our prior experience with vaccines and doctors? That all goes into it. So I don't blame somebody if they say, go get the vaccine or don't get the vaccine. That's just how they see it. So our belief is viewed as reality, right? It's the turtle. It is a turtle. It's not a rock. It's just that's reality. Since you know this, it wouldn't make sense to question it. You're not going to question, is this a tree? Like, I can see it's a tree. It's a turtle. So someone scratched my car. That's just something that I know. I can see it right here until later I go out and see it's just a reflection. And then what we call our opinion is just viewed as our perspective, right? So for me, olives are gross. That is a belief, and beliefs are just opinions, but we don't see it that way. We see our opinions as being different. And then here's a, here's a quote regarding data fabrication and falsification. Some, research, some researchers may simply be convinced of their own hypothesis, hypotheses and believe that any data that do not support their predictions must be inaccurate. That's interesting. Perspective is everything. It is actually the only reality upon which you can act. And that is just because you don't know it's a perspective. Beliefs are unarguable. So what you see is really what you get. Belief is the reason you're willing to do a trust fall. You see everyone catch Stella, so you're very confident and know they'll catch you. Your beliefs change as soon as they almost dropped Franklin quote from Slate magazine. Most people just assume everyone sees the world in the same way, which is why it's awkward when disagreements arise. It suggests one party is either ignorant, malicious, or has an agenda, or is crazy. We believe what we see with our own eyes more than almost anything else. You felt totally justified when you acted like a jerk after some idiot scratched your car. It was reality for you, that is, until you realized it was just a reflection. You experience perception as reality. And what else can we do besides act on the reality we see? The key is questioning that. I can't really know anything, right? I can only perceive things. That right there allows me to question it. When somebody tells me something and I'm like, that eh, doesn't sound right to me. I don't need to tell them that they're an idiot they're wrong, right? Because I know it's just the way that I'm seeing it. I could totally be wrong here. The brain makes assumptions when there are unknowns, usually based on what has most frequently encountered, so what we've previously experienced. Marcus Aurelius says, everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is perspective and not the truth. The bottom line is that 
these should have and shouldn't have beliefs that are the bottom line is that it is the should have and shouldn't have beliefs that are the sole cause of our unhappiness so it's not that my car is scratched that's not what's upsetting me it's my thoughts and beliefs about it right now I need to pay $600 to get it fixed People are jerks in the world and they shouldn't be. People shouldn't scratch cars. Scratches shouldn't happen. When you, when you break it down like that, how ridiculous is it to say that scratches shouldn't happen? The reason there's such a thing as called scratches is because scratches happen. That's the reality of the situation. How do I know that the wind should be blowing? Katie, Byron Katie asks. Because it is blowing. I feel it's best for you to stop here. Same thing as I said before. Absorb this. Go back to your life and see, is this true for me? Is this, is this actually true? Are all of my feelings based on what I'm currently thinking? And is what I'm currently thinking based on what I'm believing about this situation? How things are being perceived? Here's your brain. This is a draft. I'm not cutting it. Here's your green belt. Congratulations. I'm not cutting it. Excuse me. The goal here is just for me to practice for myself. If you want to, if you want to, uh, if you see my burping and my blunders as something that shouldn't happen, Go back and, and reread this. You can find it at alterability.co slash course. Okay, moving on to the purple belt. Where did we get all these beliefs? Google's listening to me. Why do some people see scratches as just one cost of car ownership, whereas others see a world of uncaring and rude people? How do you see scratches? This, this, uh, this next thing is a, a really uh, funny story. I love it. Now I'm getting all my nine o'clock reminders. Mom. Mom. Mom, why do you always chop the ends off the roast before putting it in the oven? His mom said, oh, I learned that by watching grandma. The boy was still curious, so they asked grandma. She said, I guess it's because that's, that's the way my mom always did it. They called great grandma and she said, I don't know why you two are doing it, but my pan was too small. They never questioned it, so they had to keep doing it. Why are you considered crazy when you eat a pigeon, but not chicken? Why do we hug instead of rubbing our foreheads together? Why do a thumbs up? Some people use a date format with the month first, other people use the day first. Why do we do all these things? Learning. We're continually learning and doing. Learning and doing. And this learning writes our software. Software influenced in part by our bi by influenced in part by our biology is everything we've learned. And it's continually updated via experiences. Without software updates, we wouldn't change. If we don't have any new experiences, and that experience can be just a mental realization. If we don't have any new experiences, how can we change? We won't, we'll be, we'll be I wanna say stuck, we'll be static, we won't change. And a quote I wanna mention here is, I need to get my notebook for next time. We will be the same in five, this is a quote by Charlie Tremendous Jones. We will be the same as we are in five years, except for the books we read and the people we meet. So what are those things? Experiences. If I have a friend who does something a certain way, uh, let's, say, let's say she cuts her grass a specific way and her grass is so green. I never knew it, mind blown. Now my software is updated. I might decide to do this, uh, cut my lawn the same way. Things that influence our software, experiences. So that would be things like rules, laws, religions, morals, values, customs, social norms, peer pressure, punishment, and consequences. All these things update our software. Also need to get my 
lighting set up for next time. Um, a, a decision is influenced by the belief that my friend will be mad if I don't do what she wants and the belief that it's a problem for her to be mad, right? So I want to be happy. I enjoy this friendship. I find myself to be less happy uh, when I have fewer friends. Um, if my friend gets mad at me, she might not want to be around me and thus I'll be less happy. Beliefs. When we realize we're seeing beliefs and not actual reality, we can learn more and thus improve, and I've crossed out improve, we can evolve faster because we're more open to differing viewpoints, right? So it's not really about improvement as if in the sense that, that we're wrong or broken for the way we are now. This is just our, this is just what we've learned. It's just playing out. So technically, the learning aspect is just whatever's remembered, stored and recalled, and all experienced remembering, and we've all experienced remembering something incorrectly or not being able to recall it. What is most impactful is our remembered interpretations because this is reality to us, right? So let's say I'm at an event and I remember something happening a specific way, right? That, that's my learning, not the actual event itself, not actually how it went down, but my interpretation of that. Pretty interesting. So software updates in action. Let's take a look at this. Our perceptions of sight, sound, smell, taste, feeling, and even thought create a perspective, which is a conclusion. And that's what we see as reality. Then action is taken based on that perspective. So since that is our reality, that is the only action, that is the only, that is the only source of our action, right? If we think somebody is coming at us with a knife, we're going to run. Whether that's true or not, if that's what we, as if that's what's believed by the system, us, that's what's going to happen. So let's take a look at this. It's a simplified example experience. Okay, so I have a sensation. My eye converts light into electrical signals, which are just nerve impulses, and those go to the brain. Now I perceive an image of a dog coming toward me. My perspective on this is, ah, what a cutie. And the emotion I feel is joy based on that perspective. Then I have a thought. What was that big red dog's name, right? Just a random, why am I thinking about that? And then another thought. Rusty is a cool name. And then a perspective. No, it's not. Rusty sucks name. No. Um, Sparky is a cool name, another perspective. And another perspective, this dog loves people. That's, that's my perspective, that's my opinion. Now I have a thought. Oh no, excuse me, I jumped ahead. Now I have another perception, and that's the image of teeth and snarl. Now I have a thought, is it angry? Sensation, my ear converts vibration into electrical signals. Perception is the sound of a dog barking and growling. Thought, is it going to bite me? Perspective, dog bites hurt. Perspective, I don't want to be bitten. Perspective, I'm in danger. The emotion I feel is fear and the action that comes from this perspective and that emotion is I run. Next is a sensation. It's skin. It's a haptic feeling. Uh, it's haptic. And it sends electrical signals to the brain as well. Perception of feeling bitten. Perception, yeah. Perception is feeling bitten. Feeling of being bitten. Perspective, dogs cannot be trusted. This is now the way I'm seeing the world. Because of this experience, my new perspective is dogs cannot be trusted. So now I tell a friend, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you can't trust dogs. Oh my God, I love dogs. Never met a bad dog in my life. Dogs are great. Uh, I can tell you they're not. You know, you get into a big battle, a big fight, because you're, you're looking at it from two different angles. The most, this is a quote by Dr. Edward De Bono. The most common definition of thinking is that it is a logical process based on moving forward step by step to some sort of conclusion. So based on the example above, 
So based on the dog example, all these events happen, all these perceptions happen, which results in my perspective that dogs cannot be trusted. It actually happened to me as a kid. The guy's like, oh, I pet my dog. I'm timid, you know, this dog looks scary. I go to pet it, the dog probably senses I'm scared. It friggin' almost takes my hand off. And now I kind of am really cautious around dogs. Gregory Burns says, our perceptions are based on how we interpret different sensations. The perceptual process begins with receiving stimuli from the environment and ends with our interpretation of those stimuli, our perception. This process is typically unconscious and happens hundreds of thousands of times per day. So all this is just happening. Perceptions are being created. And here we think we're in control and we're looking exactly at reality just as it is. Uh, Morpheus in the Matrix, really cool. You know, they go in that big white space. It's called the Construct just after Neo uh, gets out of the Matrix. Morpheus says, what is real? How do you define real? If you are talking about the things that you can see, taste, touch, and feel, then real is just electrical signals interpreted by your brain. That's pretty sweet. I have a picture here. You may have seen this already. It is two people on opposite sides of a nine. One is pointing down and saying nine. The other one's pointing down and saying six, right? These are perceptions. This is the way it's being perceived. Here they are fighting about what it really is. A software update can only be based on your perception. If I feel like that was dismissive, right? It might lead to a decreased relationship value. Whereas a perception of he's so quick to respond might increase the value. I need to get my water. Software update. Have water here. Check out the common thread in these quotes. Sydney Banks, everyone is doing the best they can given the thinking they have that looks real to them. Abraham Lincoln, don't criticize them. They are what we would be under similar circumstances. Jesus, my man Jesus, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And Puff Daddy, we forgive you for you know not what you do. Seeing that everyone's actions come from their current software has immense benefits. Things like guilt, hate, road rage, freaking out, just no longer make sense. And compassion comes for free. What's surprising about forgiveness is that it doesn't seem necessary now. Of course, there are still consequences from breaking the laws and rules. Changes will still happen, but unhappiness will be experienced much less. And that's the main goal. That's what we want. Byron Katie, when your mind is clear, you can do exactly the same job, but without the stress. You know, people say like, be nice to everyone, be kind, don't be racist, don't hate people. Uh, you know, little things like that, right? And those are really good ideas. Like, yeah, great idea. And those can be helpful, right? It's bad to be mean to people. If you believe it, you're less likely to be mean to people. But these are beliefs, right? What if we go back and remove the cause of being mean, of racism, of sexism, of hate? If we remove that cause, the effect won't exist. So they're such great ideas, but why are they ineffective? Because not being nice is an effect. What's the cause? Whatever you're believing. And it's not even what you're believing. It's what's believed by your system. If we want to end hate, we need to eliminate the cause because without it, there's no effect. We believe that the way we see is right. If we saw differently, we would act differently. Epictetus. Just like that lawn mowing example from earlier. You know, maybe my neighbor comes over like, or, or uh, somebody from another state comes o over. <laughs> somebody visits me from out of state. Like, why are you using a, a manual push mower. Like, yeah, what else am I supposed to use? Scissors? I'm not an idiot. 
No, there's a lawnmower. Boom. You know, they got a picture of that. This is before the internet. They have a picture of their lawnmower. They have a little um, video clip or whatever. I never even knew about lawnmowers. How could I mow the lawn? I couldn't, right? So Epictetus says, we believe that the way we see is right. That's a turtle. If we saw differently, oh, it's a rock. Then we would act differently, right? Because we're, we're acting on our perceptions, on our perspectives. So the same thing again, stop here, um, go back to your life, see if this is good enough for you. It might be, you don't need to go all the way. So here's your purple belt, congratulations. Cut clip here. This is long. Reminder, you can find this at alterability.co slash course. You don't need me to read it to you. Brown belt, let's get into it. Program editing and touching the hot stove. Programming doesn't instantly change once we understand all of this. Remember, once we see differently, we'll act differently. We'll. There's a lot of code in your programming and many unhelpful things have been learned. Now that we know we're only ever seeing through the lenses of what has been learned, excuse me, Things don't look fixed, and this allows new things to be learned, right? We can now question it because I don't know. This is just as, this is only ever how I'm seeing it. Change isn't a threat to who we are now. So just because I'm wrong, I'm, I'm excited that I'm wrong because now I've learned something new. Now, I can't say that I've learned the right thing, but I know that what I was uh, perceiving before was incorrect and now software update change isn't a threat to who we are now there's no need to defend what I know since it's not universal truth it's just something I've learned an equally important benefit is seeing that this is how everyone works see you later hate Vernon Howard says if your grand purpose in life is to wake up then whatever happens to you is good for it can prod you into self-awakening. So we're getting a little deeper here now into the awakening aspect of it. But even right now for this quote, you want to be happy. So we could reread this by saying, if your grand purpose in life is to be happy, science says it is, studies show that it is, excuse me, whatever happens to you is good for it can prod you into self-awakening in the sense that the way I'm viewing this situation is causing me unhappiness. So touching the hot stove, it's what I used to call the meat grinder. It's what, I lovingly, it's what I lovingly call situations where unhelpful code runs in your software and then causes unhappiness. It doesn't sound fun, but there's an opportunity to see things differently, right? Why is it called touching the hot stove? Well, you touch the hot stove, you get a burn. You learn not to touch the hot stove. It's wild because my life is so much more peaceful now. And then all of a sudden, I'm unhappy in a sticky situation. And each time this happens, a bit more of my conditioning, my what I've learned, is undone. Byron Katie says, investigate the beliefs that cause you suffering. Wake yourself up from your nightmares, and the sweet dreams will take care of themselves. This is probably one of my favorite quotes. As much as touching a hot stove sucks, I love it because I learn from it. And when I learn from it and I get into a situation in the future that's similar, I'm not going to act the same. I'm not going to be as unhappy. I still might have some unhappiness. And then at that point, I'm touching the hot stove again. So software update, software update, software update. Okay, so your new car actually did get scratched and you're angry. What do hot stoves bees and poison ivy have in common they're all things that we've learned not to touch you can think of an unwanted feeling as a natural alarm to let you know you're touching the hot stove carol howell tells us suffering signals the need for reprogramming everything we're talking about here okay everything after this is being revised so it may be a little mumbled it may be jumbled it may not be uh, coherent uh, but let's move along 
So another touching the hot stove example, I also do website programming um, and they changed some stuff and there was a deadline and I thought it was gonna be a simple change so I didn't jump on it right away. When I got to it, I saw this is a huge mess and boy, I was in such a bad and unhappy state. It was, it was rough, but the cool thing was I knew that this is just the way I'm perceiving it. It's still real in the sense that I'm feeling it. It's still reality for me, but I know below all that I'm okay, right? These are just thoughts. And this is the hot stove and what it was, it was a pretty hot stove. Let's imagine how we might see something different. Okay, we're gonna see something different regarding the scratched car. Once we see that this is how things actually work, we value software updates much more. People who don't see this have fewer and less impactful updates. Why? They're spending more time suffering and being unhappy and angry at what they believe is causing them suffering. The jerk at work. If that is no longer like, that doesn't even make sense to me at this point. Like I couldn't even blame it on somebody else that I'm unhappy because of them. I don't believe it. So I can't respond to that. I can only look inside and see what I'm believing. So if you are in the unhappy and you're not taking a look at the cause, if you, that's, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so you're pissed at somebody because they cut you off in traffic, right? You're so focused on that. You're spending your mental energy on that. What a jerk. And yeah, his kids and family probably don't even like him, right? If that didn't exist and, and it wouldn't even make sense to blame somebody else, you're still going to have thoughts and you're going to have thoughts about like, okay, what am I doing here? What am I looking at? Like, I expected no one to ever cut me off in traffic. No, it's ridiculous. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. The painful world that I believed in is fading. Now it's so beautiful and amazing to watch the movie of thoughts arise and actioning action happening. There's nothing else to do, right? Everything I'm doing and thinking is a product of my experiences. Now I'm just watching this movie, right? What's the next thing I'm going to say? I don't know. We're going to find out together. Thought occurs, action happens. That's the brown belt. Congratulations. Again, stop here. Let's take a look at this black belt. This one's real short. This one's also really deep and maybe at this point a little challenging to comprehend. Who am I? Am I just my conditioning, my collection of beliefs, my software? Who will I be when my conditioning changes? Where did my old self go? I used to be a freaking jerk. Ask my wife. I used to be a jerk. I would tell people what's up, tell them what they're doing wrong, tell them they need to change something. You're an idiot. I mean, I probably, I don't know if I ever said that. Probably did say that. I was a jerk. And now I'm not. I was a jerk. That was me, who I am. And now I'm not. Where'd the old self go? Right? Am I just a collection of my beliefs? That can't be true. I can't be something that's changing. The question is, are you aware? Yes, you are awareness. The knowing presence in all experience. The only thing that's not changed, as far as you know, your entire life is awareness. There's never a time you don't know that you weren't aware, right? Yeah, maybe you got put under for some dental thing. You weren't even aware that you weren't aware. You just believe that you weren't aware. You don't know. You don't know what happened. I told you this is deep. Um, so I witnessed the movie. I'm the knowing presence in all experience. I am you. We are all awareness. Rupert Spear says, awareness is the only element that is present in all experience. Can you have an experience without being aware? No. You can't. It's a belief. 
You don't exist in the way you believe you do. You're not an adjective. I'm shy, smart, silly. You're not a collection of beliefs, thoughts, and feelings. You are who is aware of these things. Has there ever been a time where you were not aware? Knowing all of this will gradually and automatically clean up our conditioning. We can watch this system working on autopilot. If we can see the truth here, this has to happen. So it's not, it's not an idea. This is not like, oh, good idea. I'm awareness. My, my feelings come from my thinking. I'm happy only from the way things are looking to me. That's not true. But it could be just a good idea, like, oh yeah, I can see how that would be useful. But if you don't see it for yourself, like, oh crap, this is how it works. Once you see that it is how it works, things change. If it's just a good idea, then this person is still a jerk, right? It's a good idea until something happens. Uh, like Mike Tyson, I think it was. Uh, you have a plan until you get punched in the face. Every time something appears to be a problem and we're unhappy, it's an opportunity to expose what we believe that's causing the suffering. The problems are stepping stones to climb out of the hole toward this awakening. And lastly, here's the red belt, right? What's the point? Okay, I'm awareness, now what? I just sit here and watch? It's not, you're not gonna do that. Thoughts arise and action happens. That's just how it works. So the red belt is come back down from the enlightenment mountaintop and jump back into the game of human life. And now you get to enjoy it all. And we'll end with a quote by Sidney Banks. If the only thing people learned was not to be afraid of their experiences, that alone would change the world. That's a big one. Might not seem big, but it's a big one. Why? Because just like when I went to the Spider-Man movie, now don't give me any hate. I didn't like it. The whole time, I'm like, oh my gosh, <clears throat> dad joke, dad joke, corny, corny, you know. And I knew that I'm having expectations of this movie, and that's why I'm not enjoying it. I didn't enjoy it, and I don't like olives, but I don't see that as a problem. It doesn't cause me to suffer. I don't eat olives, and I'm not going to watch that Spider-Man movie again. If you did watch this, thanks for being part of my growth.